Here's how I recap vintage Macintosh logic boards. First, apply flux to the board. Then use soldering braid to remove the solder off of the leads of the existing capacitor. Repeat this process on the other side of the capacitor. Soak up as much of the solder as possible into the braid. Then heat each side and then lift the capacitor off the board. Unfortunately, I got a lifted trace here. That was actually the first time I've had a lifted trace using this technique. The trace is still electrically fine. I applied some extra solder to give it some strength. Repeat this process on the other capacitors. Soak up as much of the solder as possible into the braid. Using the same technique from before, you'll remove this cap. Apply heat to each pad and then lift. Do not pull too hard. The cap will come up on its own. Using this technique, I've had very good success. I've recapped many logic boards. Just don't rush. Take your time. And remember, if the board was damaged by the capacitor electrolyte leaking onto the board, the pads are likely weaker than a board where no leakage has occurred. In these cases, you want to be especially cautious and not apply too much force. Try to remove as much of the solder as possible using the braid. And please remember soldering safety. Have a fan running to extract the fumes from your workspace. Keep an open window as you do not want to be breathing in these fumes, which consist of numerous toxic elements that we are not meant to be breathing. A little bit of exposure probably won't hurt you though. It's more of a concern for people doing this as a day job, day in and day out. Now I'm cleaning the pads with solder braid, as the pads have old solder still left on them from when the board was manufactured. Now we're moving to the other side of the board. I already removed one of the capacitors. Now I'm removing the other one. This is a tight workspace because of the jacks on the back of the logic board. Uh, the chip closest to the edge is the sound chip, the Apple Custom sound chip. This typically gets damaged by capacitor leakage. You have so many capacitors close to it. Notice what looks like burns on the board. They're not actually burns. That is the flux that I used. It actually protects the board from heat damage as well as helping the solder to flow. Now I have placed a new capacitor onto the pads. I'm using solder paste. You apply the paste to the pads, place the component in the correct orientation, then apply heat to the pad. The solder paste will naturally gravitate to the pad and make a solid connection after being exposed to heat for a certain amount of time. Hold the component down so that it stays in the correct position. You'll know you're finished when you have a clean, shiny joint between the component lead and the PCB. Repeat this process on all the other capacitors. It just takes time. Do not rush. If your cap is not at a perfect 90 degree angle or close to it, you might not actually have a good enough electrical connection between the cap and the pad. In this case, I actually had one slightly crooked capacitor later on in this video that caused the system not to boot. After reworking it, now it boots just fine. Be mindful of nearby plastic components to your soldering iron. I accidentally melted a small portion of the PDS socket off. It's not going to impact operation, it's just cosmetic. Uh, but just be mindful that the iron is indeed very hot and can damage nearby components. The reason I tapped on the new capacitors is to make sure that they are securely fastened to the board, that the soldering joints are solid. I had some doubts and so I just physically confirmed it. Don't push too hard if you do that, just lightly tap on it. If it's loose, it's going to wiggle, and if it's solid, it's not going to budge. I'm applying solder paste to bare pads and then I'm going to place the component. The component placed, repeat the same process as shown before. Apply heat to each pad to secure the cap to the board. The solder paste will melt and join the cap to the board.
Here I'm cleaning some excess solder paste off the board with a Q-tip. This is not the recommended means of doing this as you could push solder into vias where it should not be. However, there were no vias in the vicinity of these caps, I had no fear. And I was gonna clean the board in um, contact cleaner anyways, so this was just to keep the workspace clean. Now I'm placing more capacitors down. And please note the orientation of the capacitors. The red line indicates the negative side on a polymer or an electrolytic capacitor. It could also be black or blue depending on the manufacturer. A tantalum capacitor, which is completely solid state, the line indicates the positive terminal. If you pull it in a tantalum capacitor backwards, you will have a um, component failure consisting of sparks and smoke. But these polymer capacitors are more tolerant of incorrect installation. Uh, you might ask, why are the polarities different here? Why is one facing one way and one the other way? Well, the way Apple designed this board, the negative and positive terminals are swapped on this corner for some reason. And here is my finished work. As you can see, we have clean solder joints between the capacitors and the logic board. And we will go ahead and test the board to make sure that it works. Looks like we're all good to go. Apologize for the flicker here. And here we go. It's working perfectly. We have a restored Performa 550. I hope this helps you all with uh, tackling your own recapping projects. It's not as hard as it might seem. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any feedback, uh, please post it in the comments or let me know. Thanks.